Morgan's taking a little bit of a break. I think he's done two shows with us. He's tired. So we're joined by the general manager of Inland Aquatics, Eric Curran. Eric, how are you doing? Good, thank you. I understand that you guys have delved into something new, and it's called acrylics. Absolutely. Can you give us a little insight into it? Because a lot of people think that acrylics can only be made a certain way, but you guys have the ability to make parts for your tanks as well, right? That's correct. We've uh, jumped into acrylics kind of head first, actually, and we've learned a lot as we went, but we started out with turf scrubbers, and now we're doing tons and tons of custom acrylic work for about any application you can think of, we can put it together. What are limitations? Because obviously some people want really big tanks. Does the support become a factor then? Uh, the limitations after a certain size, acrylic becomes better. Actually, limitations would be more in effect for smaller tanks due to price. It really is the limitations. Larger tanks are better suited for acrylics. So as long as you have a good base underneath the acrylics, the larger you go, the better acrylics work for you. So one thing Inland is known for are their scrubbers. And here you have one, and this has been made from scratch. That's correct, Specifically, yes. not necessarily for this tank, but explain a little bit of how they work. This one here is our newest scrubber. This is what we call the Seesaw Surge. Unlike our old scrubbers that relied on a lead weight in the back to counterweight the water, uh, this new style here, our Seesaw Surge, relies on water. It counterbalances itself and fills either side to the point it makes the other side dump. It holds water in the back, at which point, it, when it tilts the other direction, the water runs under the bottom of the front one, and they both exit the same time in the front. This way, it prevents hang-up on the actual dump scrubber itself. When you make an acrylic tank, what do you start with? Are you starting with the base? Do you start with the sides? Because it looks like when you first look at it, you look at acrylic and it's not very thick. Oh boy, that'll never stick. But it's very secure. Yeah, what we actually do is we'll put the four sides together first, make a, a box. Then we we'll actually put all the panels in it. And then we we'll adhere it to the bottom. Depending on the actual structure, the thickness can vary. Usually you'll find your sumps and refugiums are thinner because they have so many braces inside and like a tank that give it a lot of support. As to where if this was the exact same size without any braces, we would rely on a thicker acrylic for that. Eric, back by the tank, you said you can make anything. Absolutely. In acrylic, anything in acrylic. Absolutely. Can you make that? I can make that. You can? I can make it. All right, I want to see you make it. No problem. We use a program called ArtCam to do all of our programming for our sumps, our tanks, or any custom Blue Zoo logos that we might be making. Uh, what I can do is I can either bring in a picture and turn that into what we like to call vectors, or I can actually custom make it. So now that I've got it all typed out here where it says Blue Zoo, I'm able then to take this program, these vectors, and put it into another program, NC Studio, which will then make that be language that this machine can understand, and at that point it will cut it out of the acrylic for me. called my bluff. How's it look? Looks pretty good, I think. This is the start of it. We can obviously fancy it up a little bit more for you, but that's how she starts out. I like it. <laughs> now I have a question. Thickness. Yes. You've got different thicknesses for any size tank. What's the rule of thumb? Because this is pretty much what size? That's three quarters. Three quarters and this is? That's a quarter. Okay, so it's one third of this almost. Yeah. Much. This is for larger tanks, obviously. When you look, when we saw the refugium, Jim, it was a little thinner, right? That's absolutely right. What gives you the um, thought process of making it thicker? Acrylolite actually gives us an equation to figure tank thickness, but as a rule of thumb, most of our tanks are made out of half inch, unless they reach six foot or over 24 inches in one direction, then they may go up. But most of our tanks are half inch or even three eighths. But once we do get into 150 up gallonage, we usually jump up to three quarters. With the exception of the Euro brace in the bottom, there will always usually be a third smaller than the sides. Eric, you can put color behind it. For you, Frank, anything. And blue. Yep, absolutely. And I'm taking it home. It's yours. I'm definitely taking it home. Morgan, we've already seen the brand new retail section, or where you re-ramped everything. What's new here at Inland? Well, we also kind of stumbled into another project that I've been uh, considering for a long time, and that was aquaculture and or aquaponics. Um, it started kind of serendipitously with uh, some tilapia that somebody traded in. We didn't have room for them. We put them in the pond. And the result of that was uh, this batch of uh, blue tilapia that you see here. Now these are tilapia that consumers eat. Exactly. These are food fish in this case. Now that we're more efficient in terms of displaying marine organisms, 
We're gonna try to branch out into aquaponics and grow some food organisms as well. And a big part of that will be the tilapia. Now obviously, people that buy tilapia in the stores, they're bigger than this, but these are gonna grow quickly. Yeah, usually they're harvested at three to five pounds. These guys are much smaller, they've still got, um, they grow really fast if you feed them really well, but we've been really busy this summer and we just didn't hammer feed them as much as we should have, but we'll start doing that now in the new system that I'll show you. So you'll basically harvest them when they're three to five pounds. That's right. Morgan, we left the tilapia and we're standing in front of a big bed. It looks like dirt, but it's not. Explain it a little bit. They call this aggregate. It's basically just a, a gravel that's used to, this will be the hydroponic portion. Again, the marriage of hydroponics and aquaculture called aquaponics. We'll be using things like watercress and kale, maybe down the road tomatoes, um, but growing food organisms up in this, what's known as a grow bed. Um, these are called bell siphons. They fill up slowly and then and drain real quickly. So we have a hydroponic element up here to grow vegetables. And then down below, uh, we have the uh, tilapia. In this case, we'll be raising, growing out the tilapia here in the Rubbermaids down below. Again, they're a dirty fish. They produce a lot of waste. That dirty water then comes up and feeds the vegetables. So you're basically taking the tilapia, gonna put them in Rubbermaids underneath, mm -hmm. and then the water that they were in is gonna come up here and feed the vegetables. Exactly, so basically the urea, the ammonia from the, the tilapia will be food for the plants. Um, and the plants will help keep the water clean for the tilapia. Um, and then we wind up getting uh, you know, food both in terms of vegetables as well as fish at the end of the season. One of the reasons why I like coming to this place is because it's really um, kind of like your playground. And you're, I don't, don't take offense, but you're like the mad scientist, uh -huh. but everything is good. What's next to it then? Well, it was going to be another grow bed, but we're kind of playing with the idea of putting some uh, uh, freshwater prawns over here. That's a Macrobrachia rosenbergi, the big freshwater prawns you see in the store. There have been people around Indiana raising those for years. I don't know, we, we're, it's kind of an experimental proof of concept system. We're gonna see what we can do and uh, I don't know, just yesterday we thought, hey, why not try some prawns over there instead of another grow bed. So if we can get by uh, with just the one grow bed, we're gonna try to do some shrimp grow out as well. Okay, so we have tilapia, we have vegetables, right. and we have prawns. Is That's this right. where the table with the candles gonna be so I can come by and eat? I hope so, I'm eager. I, we have yet to harvest our very first tilapia. You'll find some people will say, oh, that farm fresh tilapia isn't so hot. I think our tilapia is gonna be great, but I can't say so yet. Morgan, in the scheme of things that are new, I understand you're also in the bait. We do, we offer live bait now, a full line of live bait. We have a lot of clientele here right on the river, and so we have the, the full line of live bait. Morgan, I'm not sure why I never thought of this, but why wouldn't a retail fish store be a side bait shop? That's a great question, Frank. We've found that I was really reluctant to get bait fish. Uh, the fishermen convinced us to get bait fish. Now that we have it, it's been a great dovetail for us. It brings people in the door. It also allows me to sell at a lower price point to my aquarium customers that have big fish, be they saltwater or freshwater, crickets, live goldfish, and minnows. Um, it's really what we're all for us. Morgan, thanks. I appreciate you showing us everything. All the new stuff is fantastic. Thank thanks, you very Frank. much. Appreciate you coming. I've got one thing you've not seen. You want to check something else out? I'm always in. You know that. Let's check it out. Cool. Let's go. Morgan, this isn't new. This has nothing to do with fish. It's a jail, is it not? It is, it's the old Vigo County Jail built in 1882. So you own a jail? We had to buy the jail in order to get access to the property Inland sits on. How old is this? Over 100 years old. You know, I don't think I know anybody that owns a jail. Probably not. No. Morgan. 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 It's unbelievable. Luzu TV presented by Hikari featuring Fluval. It's unbelievable. Luzu TV is presented by Hikari. All fish love Hikari. And featured by Fluval, the Rolf C. Hagen Company. Luzu TV is partnered with Carib C, bringing science to life. And EcoBioBlock by Wondersave Products. To email the show, go to bluezootv.com and follow us on Twitter at BlueZooTV.